Now we're going to talk about the sexual response cycle. All of us think about sex from time to time, but few of us have given the act as much thought as William H. Masters and Virginia E. Johnson. The Masters and Johnson research team were pioneers in the field of sexuality. Together they created a model of the physiological changes that occur when one is sexually stimulated. This model is called the sexual response cycle. Let's get started. The first stage is excitement, or when one is becoming aroused. This stage contains many physiological changes, including elevated heart rate, increased blood flow to the genitals, erect nipples, and increased vaginal lubrication. The second stage is plateau, or a heightened sense of arousal. During this stage, you'll notice a surge in excitement. The third stage is orgasm. This is at the end of plateau, the shortest and most exciting stage of all. The body's muscles will contract involuntarily and the body will release endorphins, but don't trust everything you see on TV. The female orgasm isn't always an explosion of sensations. Although your vaginal muscles will contract, the intensity of an orgasm really varies from woman to woman and day to day. The fourth and final stage is resolution. Resolution is when the body returns to its normal state as before it was aroused. The resolution stage happens regardless or not of orgasm. Resolution is accompanied by a refractory period or a length of time that one cannot become aroused once again by sexual stimulation. Both men and women are able to achieve orgasm one after another, though women statistically have a much shorter refractory period. However, not all women will be able to have sex straight away. Many will need to recover from dropping energy levels and hypersensitivity post-orgasm. But women do recover much quicker and are able to have sex again if they want to. This is another reason why the pleasure gap is such an apparition. <laughs>